Man, Pete. What's going through your head? The thought of having to look at my shit when I go to the toilet afterwards is sort of borderline for me, especially if you're going, as I would call it when I was a little kid and I haven't changed now, I call it big toilet. So when you go to the big toilet, you can't wait to close that top seat down. <laughs> there you go. Of all the on-screen relationships in 2008, the one that was to lead to most tragedy was the one between Natasha Kaplinsky and Dermot Murnahan. I don't think he ever really came to terms with my success on Strictly Come Dancing. He spent ages trying to set up a show with Dermot O'Leary called Dermot and Dermot. But he, it was just a name. Still, he pushed it around for ages in various forms. Dermot meets Dermot, Dermot squared, it takes two Dermots, big Dermot, little Dermot, Dermot crabs. Well, helping raise awareness is the singer Tom York from the rock band Radiohead. I'm a massive Radiohead fan and I was so excited that Tom York was on. But Dermot was in a very bad mood because he, he wanted to do a joke, something about climate change being a hot issue. He'd written it himself and it, it went down very badly. That climate change is quite literally one of the hot issues of the moment as we're all urged to... When the joke the didn't work, something broke in Dermot. He, he gave up. And in fact, so when I was talking to Tom, I could hear this muttering in the background. He, I heard him say, he might at least have shaved, and it was just really embarrassing. And then he also said, what on earth is the matter with your eye? Uh, I heard him say wanker, and I had to actually cough over it. Tom, I mean, uh, mm. the problem is... Wanker. <laughs> when Dermot Murnahan hung himself live on breakfast television, it was a calculated critique of the way the media was going. He was caught up in this stupid world of edutainment or uh, in, in, infication, whatever you, whatever you call it, and he, he wanted to make some kind of protest against that. And as soon as he did that, as soon as he made that gesture... Documedy. Huh? Documedy. Documedy, yeah. As soon as he made that, that gesture of hanging himself on TV, he became the people's news presenter of choice. A bit of a change for you, Tom, from Radiohead to uh, Friends of the Earth, Saving the World. Saving the World? I sense something happening beside me. You know, when the guy is um, standing on a chair putting the thing around his neck, it's kind of obvious, isn't it? I went on, I turned to auto cue, and I finished my piece, and I threw to him, and he was hanging. Yeah, well, we've got a day, haven't we? Right, yeah. we've finished about six o'clock this What made you decide to get involved? Um, I mean, she was being upstaged, really, which she hated. I mean, a lot of the time, you know, uh, would make little rabbit signs or kind of go... Mm -hmm. And do things like that, but this was a real ramp up. His eyes were pleading for me to help him. So I swung off his legs just to finish off the job. They, they did ask me to dance at his funeral. I didn't think it was appropriate. Of course, you could have written the tabloid headlines yourself, couldn't you? Kaplinsky dances on Mernholm's grave. So. But the biggest event of the year was the day Blair resigned as Prime Minister and tried to hand over to someone else who wasn't Gordon Brown, even though he'd promised it would be Gordon Brown. He tipped off to me that he wanted me to take over, but of course that was something private between us. The rest of the cabinet thought it was Brown that was going to take over. Blair called a quick cabinet meeting without Gordon Brown and told them all it wasn't going to be Gordon Brown. Oh, the day itself was murder. I mean, he set off to the palace and we all thought, OK, that's it. Unfortunately, he'd promised large numbers of people that they'd be the next prime minister. Publicly, Miliband said this rumour was bollocks. I had this car waiting for me to take me to the palace, and so yeah. I shot off to the palace. Brown shot off after him, as did Cameron, who'd also been promised, while well, Ming Campbell waited for a taxi. I think all in all, there was more than 17 people he was uh, promising to hand over to. I wasn't aware of this. I mean, you're telling me this now, but I mean, that, that's really knocked me for six, to be honest. So you can see the mal was getting pretty congested. <laughs> the fly in my ointment was brown, and I had to get to that palace before him. A lot of nonsense is talked about the day of the handover. There was a bomb scare that had come in by telephone, and it was in the part of London where my car was travelling through, so we couldn't get out, we couldn't move. While on the way to the palace, Blair pulled one more massive rabbit out of his hat. 
he rings up the press and announces that we're going to join the euro, thinking that Gordon would think, hell, I've got to get back to the Treasury sorted out because it will be a stock exchange meltdown. Gordon, fuck economics, he says, keep going for the palace. I mean, it was never really established where this bomb threat had, had come from, but um, I've got a pretty good idea. Not true. Not true. I phoned in a suspect package. It may have been a bomb. Uh, it may have been a, a discarded bag of chips. Aware of Miliband's delay, Blair dragged his conversation with the Queen out for some time. Tony's audience with the Queen went on for three and a half hours, but that's not unusual. He makes her laugh. When offered tea, he asked if he could have some Lat Sang Souchon, which he knew they would have to send out for. The Queen found it quite difficult to let Tony go. He was her first real Prime Minister, and it was quite difficult for her to imagine someone else doing the job. While the meeting between Queen and Prime Minister continued, Brown was left in a holding pattern. Brown's just going round and round in circles, and you know, they had to refuel. I mean, the whole country watched this, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, people took the day off work. Everyone's going, I can't come out, I'm watching Brown go round Buckingham Palace. It was a bit like the OJ yeah. car chase, wasn't it? It was like the OJ car chase, but with no chase element and with one car. Seven hours and six years later than he'd been promised, Brown was at last Prime Minister. For months, all the staff would address Gordon Brown as Prime Minister rather than, and they would always do, and some of them, I mean, I just did that quite. Uh, you know, small scale. Some of them would do enormous sort of inverted commas, and not just prime minister, but they would say things like, um, "There's uh, an important call," you know, you know, really quite elaborately. And I think it did have an effect on Bran. One of the things that uh, happens when you are a prime minister is that you get your portrait painted and hung on the wall in Number Ten. Mm. The sitting was very pleasant and the painter was very friendly but um, when it came to the uh, unveiling it was a, a portrait of Tony Hancock hmm. I thought <laughs> there was some resemblance I suppose but after a while I, I did begin to it did begin to rankle because I, 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 I walked day after day uh, up and down the stairs every day uh, and could see a picture of Tony Hancock when it should have been a picture of me. And look at what you've got, the line of fat there, that's what does it for me. It's juicy and you can taste it already. But you leave the grill on a little bit too long and what have you got? You've got the crispy fella. Sunday morning wouldn't be the same without the little crispy fella. Now, you may have just heard the alarm there. The alarm's gone off. Let me put that down. That's good stuff. Um, let me put that down. The alarm has gone off for our one minute, minute, smash and grab bacon raid. This is your big chance to win. Details of the phone number coming up at the bottom of the screen. You can call now, but you'll need a question first of all. The prize is a whole pig's worth of bacon. Not a word of a lie. This could be yours. This is the moment you've been waiting for. And here's the big question then. What is a thinly sliced pork that could be grilled or fried and is usually served with eggs. Go. Got about 40 seconds then. The phone number's at the bottom of the screen. Call it now. I'm waiting for a call on this line. I'll give you a clue, just in case you're struggling with this one. It's a bit difficult. Um, you may have had it on a sandwich with ketchup. No? I'll, there's no call yet. I'll give, I'll give you another one. Um, think of the first two letters of the alphabet. Reversed. Next week on Time Trumpet, we catch up with an increasingly mad Tom Cruise. I've read every book that's ever been written. Test me. The crackdown on security. There'd be strip searches at things like the cinema and the, the ballet. and So people got used to just walking around with nothing on because they knew that it was the only way you could tell someone was definitely not a terrorist. We look at sport. <laughs> he clearly wasn't expecting to come out this stage, was he? Plus a look back at some of the television from the period. You come to the studio today because you think that your window is the cleanest in the world. Oh, definitely.